Welcome to Wednesday Wisdom, a weekly devotion following the F260 Bible reading plan. This week we're closing out the book of Exodus. Exodus is this wonderful book where we see God who hears the cries of his people and brings them out of slavery by his own hand. Now we come to the place where he has given the law to his people, given them to Moses. They're written by the finger of God, the Ten Commandments are. And now, as Moses is up there for many days, for 40 days, the people get weary and they actually turn into sin and idolatry so quickly, forgetting the God who has brought them out of slavery by his own hand. So let's look at Exodus 32. And this is a really, really famous passage. We know it as the golden calf passage. Exodus 32, I'm going to start with verses 1 through 4. And when the people saw that Moses delayed to come down from the mountain, the people gathered themselves together to Aaron and said to him, Up, make us gods who shall go before us. As for this Moses, the man who brought us up out of the land of Egypt, we do not know what has become of him. So Aaron said to them, Take off the rings of gold that are in the ears of your wives, your sons, and your daughters, and bring them to me. So all the people took off the rings of gold that were in their ears and brought them to Aaron. And he received the gold from their hand and fashioned it with a graving tool and made a golden calf. And they said, These are your gods, O Israel, who brought you up out of the land of Egypt. So we know that God has strictly prohibited idolatry. He he can't be resembled by things of, of creature, of creeping things. He's not like us. So he doesn't want to be worshipped in this form, this idolatry. But they take this jewelry, and probably much of it they received when they plundered the Egyptians, take these golden rings as this jewelry, and they make an idol, and they bow down, and they worship it. And we see this continuing in verses 5 and 6. When Aaron saw this, he built an altar before it, and Aaron made a proclamation and said, Tomorrow shall be a feast to the Lord. And they rose up early the next day and burnt, burnt, offered burnt offerings and brought peace offerings. And the people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to play. So we see this immorality actually happening as well. That's what rose up to play is referring to. You know, we may have never bowed down to a golden calf like this. But we are quick to bow down to idols. Even though God has brought us out of slavery to sin, even though He has called us to Himself and and saved us um, through the blood of His Son, we're so quick to bow down to idols. Idols of self, idols of security, idols of the pleasures of this world. Anything that that takes the place of God, that place that God deserves, and we put it up there, is an idol. And we're all bound to, to, to turn to that very quickly. Kind of a paraphrase of John Calvin. He said that our heart is an idol factory. It perpetually makes idols. So we go to this idol worship and we're all prone to it. Well, God was going to destroy him right there. But Moses talks to him and we see that there's an opportunity for repentance. Look with me to verses 19 and verse 20. And as soon as he came near the camp and saw the calf and the dancing, Moses' anger burned hot, and he threw the tables out of his hand, and he broke them at the foot of the mountain. He took the calf that they had made and burned it with fire to the ground and made it to powder and scattered it on the water and made the people of Israel drink it. So he's just this anger that Moses has. This is a serious, serious thing. It says that Moses, he actually heard it. He thought that there was war. There was so much corruption and commotion going on. But verse 26, Then Moses stood in the gate of the camp and said, Who is on the Lord's side? Come to me. So that actually is an opportunity for repentance. While we see much judgment does come after this, there is an opportunity to turn. There is an opportunity for repentance. We see this in the renewal of the covenant that God makes in Exodus 34, verses 6 and 7. The Lord passed before him, meaning Moses, and proclaimed the Lord, the Lord, Yahweh, Yahweh. 
A God merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love and faithfulness, keeping steadfast love for thousands, forgiving iniquity and transgression and sin, but who will by no means clear the guilty. We see that we serve a God who is slow to anger, who is gracious, who is abounding in steadfast love. That's who our God is, but he doesn't clear the guilty. Right? If you're in your sins, if you are guilty before the Lord, you will pay for your sins. However, He has provided a means of salvation. He has sent His Son to take the wrath of God so that we will never face wrath. While we may for face trials and, and tribulations, we will never face the wrath of God for those of us who are in Christ. He provides an opportunity for, to repent. When we think about the, the end of days, when we think about the coming of the Lord... Sometimes we wonder why he tarries, but he actually is giving us an opportunity to repent. So if we haven't done that, today is the day of salvation. We have all sinned. We all have bowed down to other gods. But because of what Jesus has done, because of the forgiveness found in Christ, we actually can repent today. We can be brought back in fellowship. Christian, if there's any sin in your life, turn from your sin and turn unto God. Live unto God because of what Christ has done for, for you and what he's doing in you. And we can praise God today because of his kindness to us, because of his forgiveness to us, that though we deserved great punishment, we've been brought near in Christ and we can actually begin to kill that sin in our lives. So if you haven't accepted Jesus, I'd invite you to believe on him today. If you have, remember the great sacrifice that he has done for you. And as you live out today and you live out the rest of this week, think about how much Christ has done for you. Well, I invite you, if you haven't already, to start in our F260 Bible reading plan. It's not too late. Jump in where we are and you, I know that you will benefit from it. You can pick up a copy here at our, our service uh, on Sunday, or you also can find a copy in the link on the description right below this video. Also have a link there about here journals about how you can go a little bit deeper. Well, I hope to see you this Sunday as we close up our series on 2 Peter. And if not, I hope to see you next week for our Wednesday Wisdom Devotion. Thank you, and you have a blessed week.